you know, I wanted to obviously dedicate some time to talk about specifically episode one without, of course, giving away too much information because you guys should check it out. It's dropping very soon. Um, I guess let's talk about a little bit about the elements of episode one and what you guys wanted to do for the first episode, as well, obviously the title. Um, yeah, just a quick summary trailer, per se, uh, of this first one. I shall speak. Um, <laughs> and it's, um, we wanted to do one that's based kind of around memory um, because, you know, it's been a long time now since we could like eavesdrop and we were like, oh, let's remember, right? So that's like kind of like a nice way to bring us back into the space. Um, so we did, so the like topic of the episode is like remembering. Um, there's two conversations, um, one older couple and a younger couple. And um, yeah, there's some conflict there um, over their their collective the collective memory of those two couples, and um, those uh, overlap and highlight each other's differences and each other's strengths. And um, it's a an exciting ride. <laughs> Definitely some twists. <laughs> How did you guys obtain these conversations? I, I'm assuming you didn't like actually eavesdrop onto other people's conversations and, and record no. them, right? Definitely writer's imagination came into effect here. We had a team of writers that had their own ideas and then we kind of pulled them together and formed a script out of what we liked. Each person was represented through some element of the conversations. Nice. And, and who, who voiced these? Who, who were the narrators? Um, you go again. Oh, okay. So we had a team of writers and a team of actors as well to kind of act as narrators. So it, the idea is that is it's kind of an auditory play that you're put into with a tiny director's note at the beginning. So the narrator in that sense is the director. But then once you get into the actual conversations, you're hearing it in real time by the people that are in the script we tried to keep the names relatively ambiguous and let the actors play with them and choose that so you never really hear names except for a few specific moments and i can't say more because then it will give away <laughs> part yes, of the plot yes. line <laughs> absolutely that's so cool so you guys have like a whole production team actors mm -hmm. writers i mean how'd you how'd you i mean we also have tech me. people oh we yeah tech people. oh right Oh man, yeah, because like Melissa and can confirm, it's 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 really hard to maintain a team. I mean, even us for the the quad squad is it's difficult to like find time uh, where all of us are available to talk or meet. Um, yeah, how'd that go? I mean, was was the, I'm sure it wasn't an easy process. Well, it's a lot of when to meet, and then also so because we go monthly, so we're planning on doing one episode a month. So basically, there's like four teams, right? So you have like writing, acting, directing, um, teching, and advertising. And so there's four weeks in a month. And we were like, we can do this. It's fine. So like each group only has to meet that like intensely for that like one week. And then, or like, like write for that one week. And then we all get together for that one week. And then we'll be like, this is our product. Now let's have actors read it. If the actors are reading it and they're like, this makes no sense, then we're like, okay, writers, come back for a second. Mm -hmm. um, and then um, that's the same thing. So like if the actors are, we've recorded it and then we're starting to tech it and we're like, oh, this makes no sense. Mm -hmm. um, actors, come back, please, just for a hot second. Um, and so, yeah, so we basically do it weekly, um, a weekly topic mm -hmm. so that it's not like, that hard to get everybody together because they're like oh this is my week i gotta i gotta push this week and if people are available in other weeks and want to assist of course we're open to them but in the case of the writers they're usually there for the first week sometimes they might like pop into the acting week just to say oh this is how we intended the line or just to be there for support the, the production team has been very supportive of one another all the groups so that's been really special Oh man, this is this is just so inspiring. Like I want to be part of one of these teams now. To just um, it's it's amazing. I mean, yeah, yeah we're and, and are, recruiting. Come join. <laughs> of course, of course. And are these all first years as well? 
almost all four first years. There's a few non first years. Uh huh. Oh my. Oh my God, that's so cool. Okay, and I guess the big million dollar question is, you know, after I guess season one of Park Radio ends, do you foresee multiple seasons, multiple years? Is this is this something that obviously it's it's an unfair question, kind of, because it's like just the first episode. Um, but yeah, like even when we come back to normal times, are are you are you expecting to stay in this kind of format or go back to the good old bread and butter physical (laughs) physical performance i don't know (laughs) honestly i really don't know um it really came out of a very specific time in our history you know so like i i don't know and i think it also depends on like whether people listen to it whether people like it like if I'm just like screaming this play into the void after quarantine ends, like that doesn't really make any sense. Um, so yeah, Abby, what do you think? Honestly, because of the uncertainty of the times, it's hard to give a definite answer. I do feel like this will at least try to give back some of that feeling, as Eileen was saying earlier, of connection, community, through somewhat eavesdropping or a, a nicer way to put it is like overhearing like little bits of conversations and that connection shouldn't be lost even when we do get back to quote normal times. So it might be possible to keep doing it. But as I even said, if if another format would work better for that as in like an in-person in the theater or something, maybe we'll have to transform with the times, but it's really difficult to say right now. Yeah, and, and the only reason why I ask is because, you know, I heard this really cool quote by uh, a fantastic, fantastic individual, um, Sir Ken Robinson. I don't know if you guys have heard of him before. Um, Melissa knows I, <laughs> I, like, rant about him <laughs> on this uh, podcast because, like, he's, uh, he's also a staunch supporter in creative education. But he, he actually, his career started as a, as a theater teacher. Um, and he, he gave a talk once at this summit or, so- or something and he, he spoke about, like, how you can distill down a lot of things into, like, its most fundamental elements. Like, for theater, it, you know, you can take away the stage, the lights, the, the, the hardwood flooring. I'm, I'm, I'm not a theater person, so I can't, I can't say more. But um, really, if you boil everything down, it's between an actor or, you know, I don't know the technical term, but <laughs> the actor and the audience, right? That relationship just simply with a performer and someone watching. And if you boil it down there, that's why I found podcasts so interesting as like an experimental feature because it really does push the boundaries of how much you can boil this down cuz you, you took away the you took away the stage, you took away the costume. Literally the only thing that's connected with the audience between the performer is voice and audio. Um, one media and you, you have to somehow stretch that into into this cohesive performance that I'm sure you guys did um, as well. But yeah, I mean, it is pushing the envelope, right? And and maybe once we do come back, this could become, because it's, it's also more accessible, right? Would you say, I mean, I'm, I'm assuming that performances occur, like, you know, you have to go to a theater. I, it, I'm not trying to put it as like, it's, it's a hassle, but you know, it there's a certain barrier to entry to, <laughs> Um, to enter theater, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. Uh, let's talk about r- the writing process for episode one. Um, because, of course, one of the vices of a large team is that there's competing opinions, competing directions. H- How do you guys consolidate that? Um, well, what we do is that... So we don't really know how like a real writing team works because we have zero experience. So we were like, let's make something up. And so basically... What we've been doing is so the writers all like come up with an idea and then we're like, we get in a Zoom and we're like, what are your favorite ideas? And then people like share their ideas and then we'll like jump in like, oh my gosh, we could do like um, uh, two couples sitting in a park or we could do like, oh, these like frenemies are going to fight to the death. Um, That wasn't an option. I don't know why. (laughs) And so... Um, and then, like, we'll talk about it, and then whichever, like, thing, uh, whichever, like, idea, like, central element combines the most of these, like, cool things that we could do, or the one that people got most excited about, that's the one we run with. And then we, like, each write a short play in one day, or two days, 
Um, and then we'll bring it into the next Zoom call and we'll be like, okay, so this is my short play. And then we read them. And then we're like, I really like the style of Melissa's the best. And so then we all be like, okay, cool. So we'll, let's take Melissa's script and then let's each add something to it. Like let's add, but like, I really liked how Abby did the dialogue in this section, or I really like the element that uh, David added, you know, like um, the like element of tension he added to the scenario. Um, and then we'll like each edit that script separately, um, adding in like our own personal zazz and then we'll take that big script all together. We'll try and iron out some like uh, incongruities. I don't know. And then it'll be like one whole and then we'll send it to the actors. Wow, that's fascinating. <laughs> yeah, and again, I think, you know, the, the idea itself is also inspiring, but I think what's just the coolest part about this is just how you were able to command, not even command, you like, like, facilitate you know this this really collaborative team right it's not like do this do this do this it's you know what's your idea what's your idea um and and to be able to do it even like even within a month because that may seem long but yeah this is this was like a really fast timeline for for something this large of a scale to to occur 